Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. We're going to talk about reverse engineering freaking missiles. Like missiles. Missiles. There's a channel. It's called Le Labo de Michel. I don't speak French, um, so I probably screwed up the accent, but it means Michel's Laboratory. And he reverse engineers mostly avionics. Like when you go there, it's just all kinds of controls and different things you would find in, in airplanes and other stuff. And also missiles, like javelin missiles, navigation devices for missiles, the seekers. Like, you know, when you say heat seeking missile, like the thing on the front that does the seeking. Look at that. So this is a laser seeker from Maverick Missile. He's got some of those. He even powers them up and shows you how they work. Okay, I have connected uh, this unit to a power supply. So let's turn on the power supply. Okay, you can see that the sensor keeps its position and you can hear also the precision coils. What I want to say is that his surplus store is way friggin better than my surplus store. Like when I go to buy army surplus stuff, there's like sleeping bags and hats. He's got missiles and avionics. So in France, uh, unfortunately, they seem to do it better than the stuff I've seen here in the U.S. Now, most of what I saw on there is analog and mechanical. So it's older flight control systems. Most of them are, you know, there's a heavy kind of mechanical aspect to them and a lot of analog circuitry. I think of it almost like a nerd's clockmaking site. Like, I really like clockmaking. And when I went there, it ticked all the clock making boxes and it had electronics just because there's some amazing mechanical mechanisms that are inside of these things. He'll also end up doing in a lot of the, the episodes of his that I watched a full analog reverse engineering circuit diagram. So he'll pull a board out of one of these things and then he'll say, uh, yeah, maybe this will take me a half a day to reverse engineer. The video pauses. And then all of a sudden, a whole circuit diagram is presented and he walks you through the flow of the op amps and everything and how they work. I mean, it's an amazing channel. Like, I just go and sit there late at night and watch all the things that are on it. Now, what I liked about the Javelin missile is that there was a ton of FPGAs and other stuff in this nav thing that he purchased. Um, you know, he doesn't show any of the kind of maybe serial numbers or things that are on the outside. Um, but he does show all the circuit boards inside and the various chips, lots of Texas Instruments stuff and FPGAs and things like that. What was one thing that was really interesting about it was there's no code or memory he comments. I didn't dig into some of the TI DSPs and other things that were on there, but the FPGAs for sure, as he was looking around, he couldn't seem to find anything that actually stored code. And so the working theory is that these things are loaded at time of flight so like before the missile launches all the code is loaded in and you know if it loses power all the code's gone which is you know great because maybe sometimes the missile ends up in the hands of someone else which is exactly what you're watching when you watch that thing right um but you know I, i'd be curious to know if anyone knows comment down below you know is it loaded by the missile launcher itself is there some other part of the missile that is guaranteed to explode that has it how does that uh, how does that work? Now he actually had to make like a follow-up video because people were amazed that he got a javelin missile, and were questioning like what's even the legality of having that and all these kinds of things. Um, and I'm sure you know the any military in the world is probably an idea of a life cycle for their stuff. You know, like even if they sell missiles to other countries, I'm sure it's with conditions that you're not supposed to part it out and sell it on eBay. Um, but, you know, somehow, 
like I found with smart meters or everything else, everything ends up in some surplus warehouse somewhere and there's someone willing to sell it to make a buck and he seems to have a good hookup to find those people. I'd love to have that hookup. I'd be buying missiles all day long. I'd sell all the other crap I got and buy missiles because, you know, it's just that's that's fun stuff to reverse engineer. It's like smart meters are kind of undocumented. It's like missiles are really undocumented. Now, if you know some really great military surplus sites that are selling more than sleeping bags, please let us know. I mean, I'm sure there'd be a lot of people that would want to pick up some interesting things that we could take apart. I've, I've seen some stuff on eBay, but, you know, it's really the, we want kind of the backwoods places, not eBay. Once it's on eBay, I feel like everything's marked rare and amazing, and you're going to pay $1,000 for something that's some nonsense. So I, I don't look at eBay as the best source for a lot of things, unless the person selling it just has no damn idea what the heck they got their hands on. Thanks a lot for watching.